Whenever you're ready, mate. Right. Um, well, Mick, I'll start by saying thank you for, for letting us come and talk to you. And I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. Oh, cool. Thank um, you, Fred. I really have. When you first met Dad, when was that? And what were your first impression? End of the 87, the Philip Morris was evaluating these champions in Donington Park. They invited all the best drivers from different countries who are the really the number one. And the James was one of the judges. He was evaluating us, uh, our behavior. Uh, and of course, it was really important part was uh, when we were driving, who was doing the best job. Philip Morris did select me to be one of the young driver program. His word, I'm sure, was very important part in 87. He was definitely thinking like, this guy will learn to speak English, you know, but if he's kicking ass to others on the track, that's what matters. And they, from, from there, they, they put up the money to, to bring you through Formula 3 and up to Formula 1, was that? Absolutely, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Donington test was absolutely crucial. That was the most important turning point in my career. So I've become a professional racing driver. Mm -hmm. So I had to change all my attitude of not thinking about this is a hobby, this is fun. No, no, this is now a job. That dad became your mentor, is that correct? Yeah. When I was in young age, I didn't understand the big picture. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about, give me the car, I want to win. They said, okay, Mika, we sent you to speak to James Hunt. Okay. Uh, that sounds good. Okay. okay. So you're going to go to his home and you start having meetings with him to have a talk. It was the first year in Formula One. And because the budget reasons, we didn't do any testing. All the other teams, they're testing and, you know, developing yeah. car, we didn't do nothing. I said, mm -hmm. what's going on here? You know, I want to win. So you can imagine young, young guy and, you know, full energy, I want to win, you know. The team start looking at me and said, Mika, you're getting a bit too serious. I said, of course I'm getting serious, you know. <laughs> you know, I get, of course I'm getting serious, you know, I want to drive, I want to win. I said, what time? You know, nothing wrong with me, you know. Why do I have to go talk to him, yeah. you know. Of course, it's great to go talk to him. Not, no, nothing negative about that. But you know, something you know, I have a problem about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and when when I went to when I went to see him, he was he was really chill out. He took me around the house. We walk around. He was feeding his undulats, and I think he had the undulats. The what? Undulats, the birds, little birds. Ah, the, the budgies, budgerigars. What do you call them? Budgerigar. Bodyguards. Yeah, budgies for sure. Budgies, okay. It's an Aboriginal word, it means good to eat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God, there was many of them. He used to show them competitively, where well, everything Dad did was competitive. So he was interested in them when he was a boy, but when he started racing, he got rid of them. And after he retired, my mother brought him a, bought him a pair. Yeah. And she said that was a big mistake, because she never saw him again after that. He was just always with the birds. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So he was with the birds. I said, Mika, come, come have a look, I have to feed the birds. Oh my God, I'm Grand Prix driver, I don't want to start feeding birds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, you know the, again, this kind of young ego thing, you know. When I was in the Grand Prix paddock in 91, 92, you know, people are, everybody has the same uniform, everybody's really tense. Mm. And then you go to talk to world champion and, and he's relaxed. He's chill out with the t-shirt. We had a lot of discussion about the racing and in general the teamwork. It was great. One of the most important part always stuck in my mind uh, when I left from there. He said always, oh, make a have fun. Enjoy what you do. And I was thinking like, yeah, driving a Formula One car over 300 kilometers per hour and having fun. You know, it's, it's more than, you know, it's more than that. Uh, so I, I didn't figure it out exactly what it means to have fun. Some of people said, ah, yeah, fun, of course, having fun, they're having a party. Later on, I realized it's nothing to do with that. It's about enjoying what you are doing. Mm -hmm. When you are working with your team, with the mechanics, with the engineers, the designers, management, look with the big picture, have fun. You don't have to be in this t tiny, tiny track all the time. Look the wider picture. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I started understanding what he meant. Uh, and that was quite a, quite a few years later, the words of change that we have fun. Because they see in your life, there's so many other things, what's happening outside of Formula One, that way you don't just have to uh, 
put your life focused only for that racing. And soon as you start looking with a wider picture, you start doing better results. And then a couple of years later, I won a world championship. Do you think it was that advice that helped, helped you to win your world title? My answer is yes. When you're talking about winning a world championship, it's never one thing. It's never one person. It's a, it's a combination of many people who are involved and also a matter of who are you listening and who you're taking advice from. Mm -hmm. And certainly James was one of the people who advised I took it seriously. Without him, I would never be a world champion because he was part of the judges of Philip Morris in 97. Discussions what I had with him in 91, 92. If Dad was alive today and young and fit, concentrating, mm -hmm. um, how do you think you'd get on compared to the, the, to the current drivers? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, your father had a talent of driving. Certainly he would get a great success. Uh, and if he was world champion that time, why not to be able to do it again? When you're a champion in Formula One, it requires certain qualities from the human being. What I saw in your dad, he was curious about the issues. It's a journey. It's like a university, what you go through all the time. And you have to learn all the time what's happening, how they develop in a car. You have to be involved. At the same time, you have to be curious and ask people why we do this, why we don't do like that. And, and to do that kind of thing. And I think James was good at it. He good at that kind of things, to be curious. Mm -hmm. And also, same time, to be motivator, motivating a team, motivating the people around you to be successful together. Part of the idea of, for me, um, you doing these interviews with, you, with yourself, and I did Lord Hesketh and, and Bernie as well, because it's 25 years ago that he died and I was so young, I was only five years old when he died and, mm -hmm. and so the most of what I know about him is from what I've been told by people over the years, you know, friends, family and people like yourselves. So is there anything perhaps that I may not have heard that you can tell, teach me about him or, or, well anything, I mean just feel free to speak openly about my father, I, I just love to hear it. Oh that, that's a, that, that's, wow what a question, hey, that's, that's not the, even this discussion what we're having is not, it's not the easy one because if I put myself in the same position where you are, even it happened quite a long time ago, it's, this, is not the, this needs a lot of courage from you to, to make this kind of interview and this kind of discussion. So a lot of respect on you. Your father had a lot of courage and I think you have a very similar way of approaching life. You are not afraid. You know, you like to come to have a discussion. You want to know more about your dad. And you want to know more about things about your dad. When the people really met him, really spent time with him. That's what I have seen on you that, like your dad has, a lot of courage. Uh, same time, a lot of positiveness, you know. It's very nice of you to say that. That's it. <laughs> Just getting too much now, guys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs>